so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the vale. Oh, come, 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 come to the church in the wall. Come, 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 come to the church in the vale. No spot is so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the vale. Oh, come to the church in the wild wood, to the trees where the wild flowers bloom, where the parting hymn will be chanted. We will weep by the side of the tomb. Oh, come, 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 come to the church in the wall. Come, 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 come to the church in the veil. No spot is so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the veil. How sweet on a clear Sunday morning to list to the clear ringing bell. His tones so sweetly are calling, oh, come to the church in the veil. Come, 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 come to the church in the wall. Come, 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 come to the church in the veil. Come, 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 no spot is so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the veil. From the church in the valley by the wall. When day fades away into night, I would fain from this spot of my childhood wing my way to the mansions of light. Oh, come, 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 come to the church and the come, 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 come to the church and the veil. No spot is so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the veil. If the skies above you are gray, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and burdens seem great all the whole day through. There's a silver lining that shines in the heavenly land. Look by faith and see it, my friend. Trust in his promises grand. Sing and you'll and be happy to be happy. Press on to the, to the goal. Trust, Trust in him who leadeth the who way. Leads you. He is will your soul. keep your soul. Let the world know where you be belong. faithful. Look to, to Jesus and pray. Him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Often we are troubled and tired, sick with sorrow and pain. There are others living in sin, blessed with earthly gain. Take new courage, we cannot tell what the morrow may bring. When the dark clouds vanish away, then your heart truly can sing. Sing and you'll and be happy to be happy. Press on to the, to the goal. Trust in Him who leadeth the who way. Leads you. He is will your soul. keep your soul. Let the world know where you be belong. faithful. Look to, to Jesus and pray. and pray. Lift your voice and praise Him in song. Sing and be happy today. Oft we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky. When it seems the fortunes of earth frown and pass us by. 
There are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. If we hope and trust Him each day, we shall have pleasure untold. Sing and you'll and be happy to be happy. Press on to the goal. Trust in Him who leadeth the way. He is King. Your soul. Keep your soul. Let the world know where you be faithful. Look to Jesus and pray and pray. Lift your voice and praise Him in song. Sing and be happy today. Some of these days I'm going home where no sorrows ever come. We'll soon be done. We'll soon be done with troubles and trials. Troubles and trials. Safe from heartache, pain and care. We shall all that glory share. And I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus. Lord, I'm gonna sit down and rest a little while. We'll soon be done. We'll soon be done with troubles and trials. Troubles and trials in that home. Yes, in that home on the other side. Side. The other side, and I'm a gonna shake glad hands with the elders, Lord, and tell my kindred good morning. Then I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus, Lord, I'm gonna sit down and rest a little while. Kindred and friends now wait for me, soon their faces I shall see. We'll soon be done, we'll soon be done with troubles and trials, troubles and trials. Tis a home of life so fair, and we'll all be gathered there. And I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus, Lord, I'm gonna sit down and rest a little while. We'll soon be done, we'll soon be done with troubles and trials, troubles and trials in that home. Yes, in that home on the other side. Side. The other side, and I'm a gonna shake glad hands with the elders, Lord, and tell my kindred good morning. Then I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus, Lord, I'm gonna, gonna sit down and rest a little while. I shall behold his blessed face, I shall feel his matchless grace. We'll soon be done, we'll soon be done with troubles and trials, troubles and trials. Oh, what peace and joy sublime in that home of love divine. And I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus, Lord, I'm gonna sit down and rest a little while. We'll soon be done, we'll soon be done with troubles and trials, troubles and trials in that home. Yes, in that home on the other side. Side. The other side, and I'm a gonna shake glad hands with the elders, Lord, and tell my kindred good morning. Then I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus, Lord, I'm gonna sit down and rest a little while. Gonna sit down and rest a little while. Amen. All right, let's see what else I want to play here. Hmm. How about? Let's see. Mary had a baby, and that good news. Mary had a baby, and that good news. Mary had a baby. He is the king of glory. Mary had a baby, and that good news. He will die to save us, and that good news. He will die to save us, and that good news. He will die to save us. Honor the name of Jesus. He will die to save us, and that good news. Who is the baby? Who is the babe of Bethlehem? He is the Savior. He comes to die for every man. He is called King Jesus, Everlasting Father, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Gentle Shepherd, Loving Prince of Peace. Mary had a baby, and that good news. Christ is soon returning, ain't that good news? Christ is soon returning, ain't that good news? Christ is soon returning, oh how my heart is yearning. Christ is soon returning, that's good news. Who 
is the baby? Who is the babe of Bethlehem? He is the Savior. He comes to die for every man. Mary had a baby. Jesus died to save us. He is soon returning. And that good news. We are often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Somber skies and howling tempest all succeed a bright sunshine. In that land of perfect day, when the mist have rolled away, we will understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story of how we've overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. We are often destitute of the things that life demands Want of food and want of shelter, thirsty hills and barren lands We are trusting in the Lord and according to His word We will understand it better by and by Oh, by and by, when the morning comes When all the saints of God are gathered home We will tell the story of how we've overcome And we'll understand it better by and by Trials dark on every hand And we cannot understand All the ways that God would lead us To that blessed promised land But He guides us with His eye And we'll follow till we die For we'll understand it better by and by Oh, by and by When the morning comes When all the saints of God are gathered home We will tell the story of how we've overcome And we'll understand it better by and by Oh, by and by When the morning comes When all the saints of God are gathered home We will tell the story of how we've overcome And we'll understand it better by and by And we'll understand it better by and by All right, maybe, maybe one more here. Let's see. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now grown above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the Praise thee, O God, for thy 
thy spirit of light Who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night Hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, amen Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again Revive us again, fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. that out of here for now and we'll get back to some of that music later wow what is going on with this crazy world huh lots of stuff going on apostasy abounds uh faithful man who can find we're going to talk about that today a little bit but uh wondering how you're all doing out there in youtube land and across america and uh, my volume's a little low, said Joshua. Man, my goodness, is it really? I don't know how to get it. I mean, I, I don't want to crank it up too much. But I guess I can see. How, how is that coming in now? So let's see how it is. I didn't touch anything, but Luke messes with stuff over here. So can you hear me okay now? Because I have no clue if something got changed. All right, good. All right, good. Yeah, sometimes if it's not right in this microphone, the way this microphone is designed, it can uh, tend to do that. This, I think this new board that we're using has an anti-clipping thing, so it keeps it from clipping also, uh, so it doesn't blast your eardrums out over there but hopefully i got it loud enough and i'm in the red over here so it should be loud enough uh from that standpoint usually if it's on if it's on an android phone nobody can hear anything anyway but anyway that's that's another story for another day i won't get into that too much don't want to offend half the audience there with the fact that they use android phones and they don't work anyway I'll move right along from that statement as I drop that little bomb there and keep going. But uh, hope you're doing well out there. And uh, even worse, a Dell PC is even worse. Even worse than an Android phone. I've had one of those too. And um, couldn't stand them. Anyway, okay, I'll just... I'll just keep moving here, but um, looks like we got a bunch of uh, folks back on with us here, which is a blessing for sure. Becca says, I have an Android, and I've always been able to hear you. Well, Becca, in all fairness, that's because your phone in your hand looks like you have a big screen TV in your hand. I know I'm probably the only person that has ever told you that. But seriously, your phone looks like you have a big screen TV in your hand. When you hold that phone up, it looks like you are carrying around a 50-inch television when you, when you have that in your hand. Watch. Be Becca is texting people. Watch this. And it's like, it's like a television screen. In fr it, it's, it's amazing. It's the biggest thing I've ever seen in my life. Anyway, all right. Um, enough picking on Becca. But uh, it is extremely easy to do so it, but you have to see it if you saw becca with this phone you would laugh your head off because it literally does look like she has a big screen tv in her hand all right anyway carl winters is on here carl i wasn't really waiting for you on purpose sort of kinda it's just the fact that i was praying finishing up some things my daughter is going to make me this keto dessert tonight, and she needed something. 
And I take the back roads home, so there was no way I was going to be able to get it. So I went early to get it. Right? So... But anyway, so I had to stop off and get that first. Peter's on here. He was number one. Rachel. And then my lovely wife is on here. Blaine Medland is on here. Let's see. Who else? Mary Teresi. She's on here. Said that she was buffering. Uh, let's see. Carrie, Jesus is Lord. Cindy Crockett. Not to be confused with Davy Crockett's wife, I'm sure. Cindy Crockett Bradley. Sister Cindy's on here. Let's see. Who else? Joe McDonnell had a farm is on here. Anna Shell. Wife to Redneck Shell. Yes, he calls himself Redneck Shell. Does that mean he's a turtle? I don't know. Because I've never met him. I've only talked to him on the phone. All I know is his name is Redneck Shell. That's his name. All right. Andrea. Fabian. Is that anything like Fabio, that big gay guy with long hair that was in all the romance novel stuff? Uh, let's see. We will pray. Please pray for my mother. She's 81 and sick. Her name is Bonnie. We will pray for Bonnie. We'll do that before we get off here. Okay, before we start, we'll pray for Bonnie. Uh, let's see. Becca, Joshua with the blue wrench. Um, somebody said Android is best. Obviously, their thinking has a problem. They're broken brains. Uh, Scotty. Is this Scotty from, like, Ireland? I think it's Ireland. Romani Beningo. Beningo. From South Africa. Aha. Carl Winters. Anna Shell says, Ram and me are watching. Now, Anna, does that mean? Does that mean that he likes Ram trucks? So his name is Ram? Jay Cobb is on. Alias Jacob Yates. My dad's on. Good afternoon, Dad. Dad's bringing me some coffee. No, just Scotty from Maine. Okay, Scotty, I'm sorry. I didn't know. There's another Scotty. All right. Okay. His real name is Ram Den. If you say so, Anna. If you say so. I think his real name is Redneck. His real name is Redneck. You know, he's the first guy that ever told me there was a cowboy in Florida. Because all I picture is Don Johnson and Miami Vice in Florida. Okay? And Redneck told me, Ramshell told me, he said, no, there's seriously, there's cowboys in Florida. I'm like, dude, there's no cowboys in Florida. There's stinking palm trees in Florida. There are there's no there's there's no cowboys in Florida. All right. Just stop it right now. All right. Stop it. I can't take you serious when you tell me you're a cowboy 
ting, and then I look over and I see a palm tree behind you, and you're like, this is redneck and it rough style right here. And I'm like, no, dude, you got a palm tree behind you. I mean, what are you talking about? Like, my brain just totally is like, what What do you mean? What, what do you mean you're a cowboy? Like, my brain goes into instant confuse mode. No. I mean, no, you're, you're no. But he's like, no, there's like a whole community of cowboys. Like, they're, they're all really cowboys. And I'm like, with palm trees? Because when I think of cowboys, I think of, like, Texas, Wyoming, you know, stuff like that. But when you tell me Florida, I think of palm trees and, like. I know uh, Terry Carter said there are parts of Florida that are very country. Yeah, I just can't see it. Like, you'll never get – I don't think you could actually get half of America to believe that you're, that, that, that you're country if you tell them you're from Florida. Because the only thing they could be is like, see is like, yeah, right. I mean, at least where I grew up anyway. Because we would just be like, I never thought about – I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a rancher and I'm going to move to Florida. Wasn't that, what are you going to ranch? Like, swamp? Like, what are you going to ranch? Like, alligators? Like, what, what, are you, what are you ranching? Wild pigs? What are you ranching there? Like, seriously. Like, what is there to ranch there? Palm trees? Swamp? I mean, frogs? Do you have a frog ranch, a toad ranch, an alligator ranch, a crocodile ranch? Anyway, I know I'm rambling, but I'm having fun. Just kidding. If you call yourself a redneck cowboy, I'll believe you, Ramden. I'll believe you. Oh, no. Now somebody's coming on defending the honor of Florida cowboys. The first ranchers in America, the first horses and cowboys settled in Florida before the English had any colonies. I told you, we are the original cowboys. He didn't say that. I just added that part. I, I, I believe you. I really do. But, but if you're riding your horse and you ride past a palm tree, just know that the little guy inside of me is laughing hysterically. Just laughing hysterically. And P.S., you can keep Florida and California. Wouldn't want to live in either one of them. I'm just messing with you, Nick. It's okay. Uh, anyway, I wouldn't want to live in Florida or California. Neither one of those places. But we need people everywhere, amen? Amen. So thank God for people that are willing to go to Florida and preach. My friend, Pastor Ted Alexander, started a church in Florida. And he's out there. Right? So anyway, good news for that. Now somebody's going to have to put a little time stamp on this and say, Say, no, he doesn't start until like 30 minutes in. He's got like 15 minutes of music. And that's okay. You know why? Because it's my broadcast and I can do it if I want to. And, you know, honestly, the reason why I do it is because I like it. Right? Let me switch this over in case they have something perverted on here because this is the news. There we go. We'll switch that to that. Anyway... But praise the Lord for people in Florida and all over the country, amen, and all over the world. We have people listening all over the world, and we rejoice in that. Thank God for that, and hopefully we can be an encouragement to you. All fun aside here with that, but uh, hopefully we can. That's right, Samuel. But anyway, 
So hope you've you've had a good week so far, this being Tuesday, of course. If you have not listened to my Romans 13 forced vaccinations, must we comply message, you should listen to that. And it is exclusively on sermonaudio.com slash Pastor Cooley because YouTube kicks me off as soon as I put one on. So I can't do that. So I have an entire series. If you want to know what does Pastor Cooley think about COVID-19, what, is he, what does the Bible say about these things and this, these times that we live in? Well, there you go. There's an entire series of 35 different broadcasts and sermons that deal with the subject of COVID-19. Now, also, this one is going to deal specifically, Romans 13, with forced vaccinations and what the Bible says in Romans 13, and how. Now, not how now, brown cow. Did you hear how I did that? I said how, and then I said now. And all that reminds me of is how now, brown cow. That's Remember that? Who remembers that? Where did I learn how now, brown cow? Where did I learn that? Seems like something in grade school. Was that my phonics lesson? How now, brown cow. Is that what that was? Was that a, like a phonics flashback or what? Must have been. Is that a theater warm-up voice? Well, I don't have to worry about that because I'm never in the theater. I'm clothed and in my right mind. Andrea Vanorni, you are having an Iowa tenderloin right now. Andrea, God bless you. I love Iowa tenderloins. No one, and I mean no one and no state, can do tenderloins like Iowa does the breaded tenderloin. Nobody. Right? Nobody. Now, on another note about that, my wife the other day made the best breaded tenderloin. It was keto friendly. I think it was my wife. It might have been my daughter. I don't know. I think it was my wife. She made the best breaded tenderloin. With almond flour. And it was so good, I think I ate three or four of them. Four or five of them, probably. They were so good. Oh, my goodness, they were good. Anyway, that's a hint for her to make those again. Those were... My my wife and my daughters really do spoil me with good, good stuff. Good food. All right, well, we should get into this, this Bible study. I've got a whole Bible study on faithful men. You know, let me, uh, let's see, I, I want to get you in the right frame of mind here for this, for, you know, for, how about a, how about this song? This is a good song. I am looking to Jesus, giving all in the race, pressing upward to gain the heavenly prize. Faithful men are my witness who have struggled and died, and they watch from the grandstand in the skies. In the skies. Faithful
Jacob joined with the faithful Joseph followed behind. Moses ran with the mighty men of old. There was David and Daniel, then came Peter and Paul. Now they chant as they run on streets of gold. Streets of gold. Faithful You know something, that's, that's really what God has called us to do, is to be faithful men and faithful women. Uh, let's see. Hang on, I'm changing my title here because I want to adjust it now before I forget. Okay. Let's see. Because it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Ah, uh, let's see. All right, there we go. Now, let me save that there. I'm going to change the title of this because I want to deal with something. I want to show you some things about this, which I think are kind of interesting. Uh, and I just noticed it just now, actually, when I put together uh, my Bible study. I wasn't planning on that. I like, I like uh, Ron Hamilton's songs. He sings really well, by the way. And also, uh, but you pray for that man. He's in a nursing home now. Um, he's got dementia, and uh, it's sad, but um, pray for him. Uh, and Carl does sing like Pavarotti. That's why, that's why he, he laughs at Mary singing, because he can sing like Pavarotti. That's why. All right. But, you know, there's something going on. Remember the QAnon stuff? Remember the remember when I talked about that? YouTube knocked that off, too, by the way. They kicked that off. I, I was talking against QAnon, and then they cut my broadcast. How about that? Uh, anyway, but remember uh, I talked to you about QAnon and all those other people? Are all that that group and and Trump's boys and all that other stuff? Uh, well, Michael Flynn, General Flynn. Uh, I absolutely believe that he is one of the biggest. He is he is part of the psyop. Okay, he is part of the psyop of what went down here with QAnon, with um, the literal raping of the Republican Party, or excuse me, the religious right by the Republican Party. That was Michael Flynn. And these generals that get high up in the military – and by the way, he was, he was, I believe he was the head of the CIA or National Security Advisor, excuse me, National Security Advisor, whatever. Those men that are high up like that, they know, they know all about mind control. They know all about the things that they do uh, or about, about psyops. 
like the government runs psyop operations all the time. That's not spooky conspiracy stuff. Um, it's a psyop. I mean, it's just it's just easy information that you can find anywhere, right? Not hard to find. Now, General Flynn is at Cornerstone Church. John Hagee, who I haven't talked about at all, really, on my broadcast, but I'll bring you something about him sometime. He has the heresy of of uh, Israel's going to be saved without the gospel, and Jews don't need to be saved, and all this other weird stuff. But we'll talk about that some other time. We won't get into that today. I'll save that for another broadcast. But anyway, over the weekend, this church erupts, erupts into a Let's Go Brandon broadcast, or Let's Go Brandon chant, okay? Thanks. Uh, let's go, Brandon Chant. They they break out in it. Now, if you don't know what that is, the Let's Go, Brandon Chant, Biden, somebody with Biden or something like that was, was um, at a... Uh, or, or somebody, some representative or something. I don't know what it was. They were at some game. It doesn't really matter. But they were at some game, and they and and, and oh, they were at some game, and and behind uh, the crowd was chanting, "Let's go!" Or the the crowd was chanting, "Blank Joe Biden," dropping f bombs. Okay, they were dropping f bombs, blank Joe Biden, right? So, and the, the, the sport, the reporter changed it to say, oh, do you hear him saying, let's go, Brandon? So that reporter looked like an idiot because that's not what happened. They were actually chanting, um, blank Joe Biden. Well, now you have churches and Christians re- uh, using that connotation, right? Using that and spreading that garbage, which basically is the F word, okay? Right? And, and now you have churches that are that are that are a part of that, and they're saying Let's go, Brandon, in, other, in lieu of saying the F word about Joe Biden. Well, this video right here, if it's here, let's see if I have it here. And somebody said, somebody said this is a, somebody said this is not a church, it's a political rally. Well, Maybe. Okay, think about that. So here's a church, right? Here's a church shouting that. And this conference, the crowd, there was the, the Reawaken America conference that featured several controversial QAnon link speakers, including Michael Flynn's formal national security advisor to Donald Trump, right? Flynn made controversial comments during his November 13th appearance, saying that if the U.S. should only have one, that the U.S. should only have one religion. Flynn, Flynn himself has espoused QAnon conspiracy theories, sold QAnon shirts, and posted a video of him and his family taking a QAnon, QAnon oath. The conference was held at Reverend John Hagee's massive mega church over November 11th to the 13th. Its organizer, Clay Kark, is the host of a, a podcast called Thrive Time Show with MC of Reawaken America. His website claims he is the founder of several multi-million dollar companies. From spreading COVID-19 misinformation to claiming that America needs to be saved. Well, America does need to be saved, right? But the point is, the, here's the point, okay? Here you have... 
what you have here, right? You literally have a mega church, right? And their their chance for let's go Brandon or whatever, which is really what we know it is. Can you and you have you have players on board like Michael Flynn, General Flynn, right? You have men like that on there who are pushing QN on conspiracies, right? Which I believe conspiracies way worse than QAnon. You get it, right? Like, you know who I am. You understand, like, I believe they're all corrupt. Like, I think I think Michael Flynn is probably QAnon, if you really want to know the truth of it. Like, I think Michael Flynn's probably QAnon. And they're all fake. They're all fake. They all hate God. I don't think Michael Flynn's a Christian. I think, I think that... His trial was a hoax trial. The whole thing was hoax. The The whole situation was hoax. And all it was designed to do was to pull people in from the religious right to get them to, to champion Trump's causes and to follow Trump, who was an immoral and wicked man, and to follow him and to vote for him and to get on board with him. And what ended up happening? A bunch of people got hurt. But who got hurt? Did Trump get hurt? No. Did General Flynn get hurt? No. Does John Hagee get hurt? No. No. Some really dumb ham and eggers that followed them and went up to that and went up to that um, that capital and were let in probably. And whatever the case may be, it doesn't really matter. But they're all being charged, right? So. What business does a church have bringing in political people like that, putting them on the stage, having them push their garbage, right? It's like it's like our whole country has turned it. The churches in this country, which John Hagee's been an apostate for a long time, but... They've they've literally turned into ap- apostates, right? I mean, the news is full of absolute one hundred percent apostates. For instance, here's another one. Check this out. Vaccination becomes new church ordinances as more churches ban worship for the unvaccinated. So this church, this church is going to base its communion with somebody else on whether they're vaccinated or not. That is apostasy. That's what that is. As more and more so-called churches include at least one of the campuses at the former Southern Baptist pastor J.D. Greer Summit Church announced proof of vaccination as a requirement for attending corporate worship. It should be noted that this addition to the gospel is not only a dangerous precedent for the church, but wholly condemned. You're not allowed to kick somebody out of your church. You're not allowed to kick somebody out of your church because they're not vaccinated. What is that? It's apostasy. It's absolute apostasy. There is a ban or there is a there is a absolute famine. There is a famine today in the land for faithful men and women. An absolute famine for it, for them. And this just shows you, I wanted to, I started with this because I want to kind of get your attention 
to understand, boom, this is what's going on. And now we're just going to have a Bible study on faithfulness. But I want you to remember one thing. And think about this one thing. I want this thought. I want you to turn to Mark chapter 9, because this is really out of Mark chapter 9. This, and I may put this under Mark chapter 9. I probably will. Because it really isn't about COVID or anything like that as much as it is about faithful men, faithful women. You know, the disciples, they had a problem. Mark chapter 9. The disciples had a problem. Jesus had just told them that he was going to suffer and die. I mean, he just got done telling them that. It's, he said, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. But they understood not that saying and were afraid to ask him. And he came to Capernaum, and being in the house, he asked them, What was it that you disputed among yourselves by the way? But they held their peace, for by the way they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. Now, I want to stop you here, and I want you to think about something. You that are Christians, you that are born-again Bible believers, men or women, I want you to, I want you to think about this for a second. And, and really ponder this in your heart. And I, I want you to think about this very closely. These men disputed about who would be the greatest. Who would be great? You know, they didn't even have compassion on Christ, who was lamenting, who was, who was expressing his sorrow and telling them, I'm going to die. Right? They said, I'm going to die. And I'm gonna, the Son of Man is going to be delivered to the hands of men. They shall kill him, and after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. So they understood not the saying, and they didn't ask him about it. They were afraid. But they weren't afraid to have a discussion with each other about how great they were. And which one of them was greater than the other? Which one of them was greater than their brother? right? They held their peace. They didn't want to say that. Well, Jesus said something to them. And he sat down, and he called the twelve, and he saith unto them, If any man desire to be first, the same shall be last of all, and servant of all. I want you to remember one concept in the kingdom of God. This is one concept that is very important. God has never called you to be great. He's called you to be faithful. No matter what it is that you are doing, God has called you to be faithful. That's, that's what he's called you to do. So whether it's a, as a mother, as a father, as a Christian, as a pastor, as a husband, as a wife, whatever it is, God has called you to be faithful. And that's what Jesus was getting at with them. That's what he was trying to explain to them. I, you're to be a servant, and you're to be faithful. So we're going to look at faithfulness here this afternoon. We're going to look at what the Bible says about faithful men, faithful women, right? God is telling us, little children, don't worry about great, being great 
right? Don't worry about being great, about greatness. But be concerned with faithfulness. We have a duty before God. You know, Proverbs 20, verse 6. I want you to turn there first. Proverbs 20. This is very, this verse is very convicting. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. So most men are going to brag like these apostles, these disciples, and they're going to say, most of us are going to say how great we are, right? We're going to talk about how great we are. That's human nature to talk about ourselves and to talk about how great we are. Right? That's what the, the Bible says. But a faithful man who can find. God is not concerned with all that you say. He is concerned with not only what you say, but what you do. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. See, the just man walketh in his integrity. God has called you to be faithful. Faithful. You know how difficult it is in these end times full of apostasy? How difficult it is to find faithful men? I mean, look at these pastors prostituting their pulpits out to government psyop operations mandating vaccinations for people, uh, for them to attend church. But they did it long ago with 501c3 and becoming government entities. Now, didn't they? It is faithfulness, not greatness, that God has called you to. God wants his people to be faithful. A faithful man who can find you know something? That ought to be the goal of your life when you're saved by the grace of God, that you ought to be faithful. Wherever it is and whatever it is, if it's, to, if it's in the matter of the marriage, your marriage, you ought to be faithful to your wife. You ought to be a faithful husband. You ought to be a faithful father. You ought to be a faithful wife. You ought to be a faithful daughter. You ought to be a faithful child. Faithful. You know, the Bible says that no man will, will, will be, nothing will be committed to a man unless, by God, unless he is faithful. You know, there's a lot of people that aspire uh, to be in the ministry, to teach people online, and to do all these other things. But you know what? They got to prove that they're going to be faithful in the little things, which we're going to get to, in the things that God has given them to be faithful over now, their responsibilities now. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Faithful to endure hardness. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Let it be said of you at the end of your life that you were a man that, or a woman that was found faithful. You know, the Bible says that faithful men fear God. Nehemiah. Let's go to Nehemiah. Chapter 7. Nehemiah. 
that I gave my brother Hanani and Hananiah, the ruler of the palace, charge over Jerusalem, for he was a faithful man and feared God above many. You know what faithful men do? They fear God. That's what faithful men do. And I'm, when I say men, faithful men, I'm talking about women too. In the capacity that God has given them. In the place, the position. Faithful in what they are to be. So don't just think I'm speaking to men here. I'm speaking to all of us. The word of God is speaking to all of us here when it comes to that faithfulness. He was a faithful, you know what faithful men do? And faithful women do? They fear God. They fear God above the government, they fear God above uh, their family, their friends. Uh, they fear God, fear God above their spouse. They fear God above what their children think, what their family thinks, what others think. They fear God. That's what faithful men do. And there is an absolute famine of faithfulness today and faithful men. You know, Proverbs 28, verse number 20, tells us a faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Faithful men abound with blessings, men that are faithful, men that continue on. You know, let me tell you a story about a few things quickly. Just give you an idea, an example of things. You know that I preach furthest from any prosperity nonsense at all. Prosperity for the Christian is mostly spiritually. But God does bless his people, and he does take care of his, his children, but I'll, I'll give you an, uh, some understanding of the a little bit of understanding. You know, the Lord has greatly blessed my family, greatly blessed us uh, in the house that I bought many years ago, and the Lord allowed me to sell it and really double the price that I paid for it, okay? Um, double the price that I paid for the house, I was able to sell it, Right? And my parents were able to sell their house. And, you know, I always wanted to live out in the country after a while. And, you know, my parents wanted to live out in the country. And the Lord provided us an opportunity to do that through different situations. We didn't have to get in a bid war. We didn't have to uh, do what, like a lot of people put, you see 10 bids go down on houses and all this other crazy stuff. And, you know, I said, you know, I'm, I'm probably not going to be able to. I, we, we found this house, and it was really more than what we wanted. You know, we weren't looking for anything that nice or anything like that, and the Lord provided it, okay? God, God provided it. Um, and I look at, and, you know, I was able to get a deer on my property, you know, which I prayed specifically for. And you can go listen to that testimony that I gave of that. And that, that's very near and dear to my heart, that testimony, because of what God did. And, you know, I, I don't have a lot of money or anything like that. I, I'm not talking about that. But it's just what the Lord's provided for me and my family and how he's taken care of us. And... I mean, I, I live in a house now that I never dreamed I'd own anything like that, really. I mean, it's not a mansion or anything. To me, it is. To me, it's a mansion, you know. To me, it's, it's abundantly above all that we ask or think. And it isn't because I did it. Do you understand what I mean? It isn't because I did it. It isn't because I, I didn't do any of that. But I, I'm saying all that because I watched a family member that I know that's living wickedly, that when I got saved, he had an opportunity. And his opportunity was to follow the Lord. When he saw me get saved and God changed my life, God brought me to Minnesota, showed this family member what he did in my heart and what the Lord did in my life. And everything that 
my family member would go out and try all these, you know, get rich quick scheme things and try to make money and try to do this and try to do that and buy houses and cars and things and all this other stuff, never was happy, wouldn't follow the Lord, got into trouble, life went down, got into wickedness and sinfulness, got into, you know, sexual sins and perversions and everything else. Right? Um, you know, got and, and just abandoned his family, walked away from them, and literally really has nothing today. But he sought and he ran after all those things. And what the Lord showed me I didn't even want any of those things, to be honest with you. I, I didn't even want any of those things. But what the Lord showed me was that he blesses faithfulness. He showed me that, and he answered prayers for different things. And, and, faith, and, and God blesses faithfulness. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. Now, you can be the poorest man ever and, and, and barely have enough bread, but if you have your family and you have your health and you have, the, you have the Lord, number one, you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have everything. But what I'm telling you is, is that keep putting one foot before the other and be faithful in whatever it is that God has given you. Be faithful. That's what God's called his people to do. He hasn't called them to be great. Seekest thou great things for thyself? Seek them not. No, seek to be faithful. Set out to be faithful. God will take care of everything else. Okay, next, let's see. How about Numbers 12? Numbers 12, 7. I like what the Bible says about Moses. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? You know, God looked down on Moses, and he looked at him and said, Moses is a faithful man. You know, God protects faithful men. God may chasten faithful men. I know this by experience. I had enemies surround me. People try to destroy this ministry, and by God's grace, it is still here. A Men and amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, but they tried to destroy me. But God said, no, just like he did Moses. God looked down and said, faithful men. God says, I will protect faithful men. I've said this to people, and I'll say it again. There are people that are going to come back that went away. There are people that left this ministry that went away. There are people that, there, there's already been some that have returned, and there will no doubt be more. And the reason for that is, is that, but, but we've got to be right with God, and we've got to be faithful people, so they have something to come back to. When your children go, go if your children go wayward, they've got to have some place to come back to. So you've got to remain faithful, no matter what happens. You've got to remain faithful. It says here, and God protects faithful men. Look what he did. To, he said, he said, you weren't afraid to do that. God protects them. Now God punished Moses. God punished Moses. He chastened Moses, but he didn't let anybody else do it. And that's what God did to me. God didn't let any of my enemies do anything to me. 
but he did. God chastened me. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, let's keep going here. Faithful men, right? Faithful men like Moses. You know, Moses wasn't a flashy man. He was meek. More meek than any man on the earth, the Bible says. He was the meekest man on the earth. And God saw that meekness. And God said, well, I'll fight for him. You know, we're to be faithful because God is faithful. You and I are to be faithful because God is. Know therefore, Deuteronomy 7, 9, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. God is faithful. Listen to me. You may be going through something right now, and it feels as if your insides are ripping apart. And you feel everything around you is changing and everything around you feels terrible and bad and nothing is good. Let me assure you by the word of God that God is the same. He has not changed. Though he has allowed you to go through something, he is faithful. God is faithful. And he will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I don't care how bad it feels, how hard it is, how strange it feels, how, how discomforting it feels, how terrible it is. God has not abandoned you. And he will not. Because he is faithful. It's who he is. We'll get to that in the end. Right? Ah, let's see. Always remember God's faithfulness. He is faithful. God raises up faithful men and women. 1 Samuel chapter 2. And I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in mine heart and my mind. And I will build him a sure house. And he shall walk before mine anointed forever. God raises up faithful men and women. God raises them up for the work that he calls them to do. And he breathes into them faithfulness and life and perseverance. I believe that. I hope you believe that. Amen. Abraham was faithful in all his house, and God blessed Abraham's faithfulness. Today we have a famine of faithfulness in the land. Psalm chapter 12. Verse 1, help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. Oh, I've seen it so many times. Godly man ceaseth, godly men falling, mighty men around us falling, courage almost gone. Hold the fort, for I am coming. They speak vanity, everyone with his neighbor, with flattering lips and with a double heart. But faithful men, there's a famine. Faithful for the faithful fail from among the children of men. God preserves faithful men, though. Turn to Psalm 31. I like these Bible studies. I like just doing straight Bible studies like this sometimes. <clears throat> just get in the Bible and it'll strengthen your heart. Proverbs 31, 23. O oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Some of you are in some struggles right now. And man, it's hard. You get up and you don't want to get up. You get moving, you don't want to get moving. 
you've got duties and you've got tasks to do and they 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 burden you and they weigh you down you're depressed you're discouraged you're you want to give up the fight you want to stop you don't want to do it anymore but just remember the lord preserveth the faithful god preserves the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer god deals with the proud doer but if you'll be faithful God will, God will breathe life into you. God will give strength to you. God will not abandon you. He will strengthen you through all your trials, through everything. You're waiting to see the deliverance of the Lord, some of you. Go back and listen to the sermon I preached on Sunday on deliverance. It's supposed to be on YouTube, but we didn't get it on there yet. We'll get it on there tonight, Lord willing. But um, we'll try to get it on there, but it, it hasn't been put on there yet. Um, But uh, anyway, so, uh, you know, faithfulness. God, God preserves the faithful. He looks down and he sees the faithful, those that are following him, those that are willing to continue to follow him through thick and thin, and God blesses that. He doesn't ignore that. God looks down and sees that faithfulness. He sees it and he rewards it. Amen? Remember that. God doesn't forget that. And you you should remember that. Psalm 101, verse 6. Let's turn there. Look at this. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. Now, that's David talking about the faithful of the land. David's saying, I'm going to make friends with those men that are faithful. You know, faithful men are your best friends. Men that are faithful are the friends that you want. Do not make friends with unfaithful people. You may counsel them and you may try to disciple them. But when you find people that are unfaithful in whatever area of life they're in, I'm not talking about simple character flaws that men have to grow through, but I'm talking about men that are unfaithful in their character and and their wicked men. Don't make friends with those men. Don't, Don't make friends with those men. Don't make close companions with those men. That's, a, that, that's dangerous. Dangerous to be friends with men that are not faithful. Uh, evil communication corrupts good manners. Don't, don't stick around men like that. Not good. Not good at all. Proverbs eleven thirteen. A talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. Okay. Now here's another thing about faithful people. Faithful people, when you talk to them about things, you, you can confide in them and you can trust them. You can trust faithful men. They're not talebearers. They don't go running around telling your business. There's pastors and people and others that have, um, you know, and friends and others across that, that have talked to me or other people and asked for prayer, and I didn't go spread around everything that's going on in their lives. Right? We've got to be faithful. A faithful spirit conceal it the matter. I'm not talking about if somebody's in wicked sin and they're hurting people, you keep it a secret. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about, you know, people that, that, that faithfully confide in you, right? They confide in you, and, you know, you're, you're able to be trusted. You're able to be trusted with what they tell you. You're able to be trusted. I hope that's you. Ladies, you got to be careful about that as well, that you're not tail bearers. 
that you don't run around and tell everybody everything. But you're able to conceal a matter when it's necessary. I'm not talking about abuse and wicked things and all. You, you, I get the point. I'm not talking about that. I have to reiterate that. I shouldn't have to, but I do because there's been a lot of wickedness that's went on and, and different things like that. And people think you got to conceal that. No, you don't. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when friends confide in you and things of that nature. Faithful. Faithful people. Right? You don't have to tell everything you know. You really don't. Uh, Let's see. How about Proverbs 14, verse 5? What's the Bible say about faithfulness there? I think I got the wrong verse. 14. Nope. Wrong one. I don't know. Let me see. Maybe it's 15. Oh, here it is. A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. A faithful ambassador, right? Faithful messenger. Right? By the way, faithful men are refreshing men. They refresh the spirit of others. Faithful men and women do. You know, it's refreshing when you know you can trust somebody. When, when you know they're going to be doing the same thing they've always done. Uh, I want you to think about that for a second. Here, let's read this verse. As the cold of snow in the time of harvest, so is a faithful messenger to them that send him. For he refresheth the soul of his masters. You know what? Faithful people are refreshing to be around. When you know that, man, these people are the same, they're doing the same thing. It's like, okay, if you didn't see me, if you visited Old Paz Baptist Church when we first started a year or 14 years ago, and you didn't see, and you left a year after we started, and you came back 13 years later, you'd find me in the same, well, not the same building, but the same assembly that you found me in. 14 years earlier, you would find me preaching the same gospel that I preached 14 years ago. You would find me, by the grace of God, holding to the same book that I held to 14 years ago. You would find me leading my family and other families in the gospel witness and in the gospel and in the faith as you found me 14 years ago, right? Faithful men. Faithfulness. Right, You would find other men in this congregation that have been here since you'd find my dad still being here 14 years later. You'd find my mom still being here 14 years later. You'd find Lee and Carrie being here 14 years later. You'd find others being here years later that are still here, being faithful to God. Right, Faithful people, years later, continuing on in the faith. Faithful. I thought about this, which is really interesting. Like my daughter, Mandy, has not known any other church besides this church. My other children, Lucius was so young when he came here, he would, was only a year and a half old when we started the church. So he, he doesn't know any other church either. He doesn't even really remember Rosemont at all, uh, the, the church that we were sent out of. But uh, my children know no other church but Old Paz Baptist Church. This is the church that that uh, they were born in, you know, uh, their parents coming to church here and, and, and being members of. This is the church that, that many of them have made professions of faith in. This is the church that my three oldest ones have been baptized in. This is the church that they continue to serve the Lord in. It's the only one they've ever known, right? Sunday morning when they get up and they they know what's going on. They know we're going to church. Sunday afternoon, they know that we're in church. Sunday uh, into the evening, really, we're in church. Wednesday night, they know we're in church, that that's that's where we are, that we're doing the same thing that we've always done by grace. You know, that's what God wants is faithful people. 
faithful. Some of the children in this church, the same thing. It's not just my children. It's other children. They were born in this church. They were ra- they, they're being raised in this church, and may, by God's blessing, if they're not sent out of here uh, to do gospel work somewhere else, may they live and may we all live and die in this church, right? Uh, serving the Lord and being faithful to God. That's faithfulness. It's refreshing. Faithfulness. God preserves faithful men. Amen. He preserves them. He keeps them. You know, here it is, Proverbs 14, 5, a faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. Faithful men are not liars. They tell the truth. They speak the truth. Amen? Hey, you want to know something else? Faithful men will wound you if they have to with the truth. Look at this verse, Proverbs 27, verse number 6. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. I thank God for faithful men of God and, and faithful brothers in Christ that over the years have been used to wound me with friendly wounds. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Better to have faithful friends that wound you than friends that kiss you into hell. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. You know, men that men that'll tell you the truth, men that'll love you enough to tell you the truth, love you enough to help you. Right? Many of you can thank God for the preacher that God used to lead you to Christ or the gospel witness that, and, and the faithfulness of a man of God or a pastor or, or, or a, a Christian sister in the Lord or somebody like that, that that would witness to you or that would tell you the truth or that would straighten you out when you were wrong, that would, that would give you some wounds, right? But they wouldn't flatter you into hell. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Proverbs 28, 20, we talked about. Faithful men abound in blessing. A good warning for you in these end times to remember also is Daniel chapter 6. Verse number 4. Faithful men will be persecuted. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Faithful. Daniel was persecuted. Why? Was he a bad guy? Was Daniel a bad guy? No. Daniel wasn't a bad guy. Daniel was a God-fearing holy man. But what happened? He was persecuted. Why? Because he was faithful. Amen. Matthew 24, verse number 45. You know, end times, end times people, end times people need to be faithful people. Matthew 24 is dealing with the end times. And 
the Bible speaks of faithfulness. Look at this. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find him so doing. You know, you and I are supposed to be faithfully at work. When the Lord comes back, we're to be faithful. We're to be found faithful. And God's going to bless us in the end as we're faithful to him. He's going to bless us with rewards, rewards and responsibility. You know, listen to me. I want to say something to you. Some people, they want to do something for God great. God's not looking for you to do something great for him. God's looking for you to be faithful. Some have delusions of grandeur. Some want to be teachers of men. They want to do so many things. There's nothing wrong with that. But are you faithful in what God has given you? Because that's a principle of the kingdom of God, is faithful in the little things. Look what he says here in, in, in In Matthew 25, 21, his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. God wants you and I to be faithful. Faithful. Right? Faithful. Not great. You're looking, I want to do great things. I want to see all this this done. And there's nothing wrong with, with wanting to see people saved. That's what we should want to do. But are you looking at your own house? Are you looking at your own children? Are you looking at your own wife? Are you looking at your own church? Are you looking at those things? Are you looking at being faithful there? Because that's really the thing. There's people that can't even discipline themselves enough to, to be faithful in their Bible study and their devotion time and their prayer time, yet they want to tell other people what they're to do for the Lord. Yet they want to... They want to advise other people, and they want people to look at them as some kind of counselor, and they want to pour out all their their wisdom and everything else, and they're not even disciplined enough to do what they're supposed to do for themselves. you got to be faithful in the things that God has given you to be faithful in now. Faithful in the little things. You know, God has busy people do things for him. God, ha- God calls busy men. If you want something done, a good principle in life, call a busy man to do it. He'll get it done. If you call a man that's not busy to do it, not a good idea. Call a busy man. He'll get it done. Luke chapter 16, verse number 10 through 11. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Listen to me. There are people that they want to be married, but they, they can't even be faithful to discipline their own lives. Or they want to own a house, but they don't even take care of the rental property they have. Or they want to have nicer things, but they don't take care of the things that God has given them. 
they're not good stewards of what they have now. Yet they want God to give them things from somebody else. Right? But they want but they want God to do something for them. Well, if you're not faithful in what you've had, listen, if you have desires of preaching to people and all of those other things, yet you don't even lead your wife, you don't even love your wife, you don't lead your family. You're not even you're not even putting Bible into your children. You're not even you're not even doing any of that. Why would you think that God would want to use you for anything else? God won't use you for anything else until you're faithful in what he's given you. That's a that's a kingdom principle right there. If you look at it, he says it, if therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? It's like people get in the ministry and they don't even pay their bills. Well, if you don't pay your bills with the unrighteous mammon, why in the world would God call you into his kingdom to do work for, his, for, for him if you're not even faithful in what God's called you to do? In the unrighteous mammon. Or if you're not faithful to raise your children and discipline them and teach them and guide them or have rule over your own spirit and discipline your own spirit, yet you want to go out and preach to other people. Acts chapter 16. Verse number 15. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended to the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. You know, Paul went in to her house with his with his companions because the lady's faithfulness could be seen. When people look at you, do they see a faithful Christian woman as a lady? You ladies out there, do you dress like a faithful, godly Christian woman? Or are you showing off your breasts and letting them hang out and, and wearing tight britches and stuff that shows off every curve of your body and um, showing your cleavage off and, and, and not talking and speaking uh, biblically in the right way? You're loud and stubborn. Feet abide not in your home. Your testimony is not good. Right? But this lady was a faithful lady. They knew her testimony. They could see it, that she was a faithful Christian. And that's what's necessary today. Faithfulness. Faithful saints. You know, faithful men are servants. Colossians 1.7. As you also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. He was a faithful minister of Christ. He was a faithful servant of the Lord. Servants. 
1 Corinthians 4.17 talks about faithfulness. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son, and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Faithful. Timothy was a faithful minister, faithful servant. He could be trusted. He could be trusted to uh, deliver a message for Paul. Faithful. Pastors ought to be faithful. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.2 talks about that faithfulness. Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Look at that. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Faithful in doctrine. Right? Faithful. You know, wives are supposed to be faithful. 1 Timothy 3, 11. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanders, sober, faithful in all things. You know, here's an interesting thing about this. You say, well, I'm not a deacon's wife. Well, what if God wanted you to be? What if God led a church to vote your husband in? Shouldn't you be qualified? Should you be the reason that your husband's disqualified? Looking at your spiritual walk in your life, why wouldn't you want to qualify as a faithful woman, sober, not a slander, sober in all things? Wouldn't you want to be known as that? Wouldn't you want, want to be known as being a faithful wife? That if your husband was called upon to do something and somebody else looked at you and said, well, yeah, but his wife's not faithful. She's not a godly woman. She's not separated or sanctified. She's not a servant. Any of those things. She doesn't have a desire to do that. You know, what's wrong with having a desire, even as a Christian man, that you live according to the qualifications of a bishop? Why wouldn't you want to live like that? Shouldn't that be all Christians' goals, to, to, live, to live in such a way to be faithful? The Bible talks about children being faithful. Titus 1.6, if any be blameless, the husband one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. Our children are supposed to be faithful. We're to raise them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and our children are supposed to be faithful. I'll be honest with you. It's hard for me to stomach to think about people out there when I think about it right now this second. But it it has always bothered me. I shouldn't say stomach it because it doesn't really make me sick, but that's kind of like a figure of speech. But the point is, when you see people out there and they're preaching to people online, yet their own household is an absolute disaster and a mess. Their children are not walking according to godliness. Their children are bad examples. Their children are living wickedly, and they're in their own home. Or pastors that have children that are living wickedly in their own house, and they make excuses for their children. Or they don't make excuses for them, and they don't, their children are living wrong. And there's been a lot of times that men have been, unfortunately, good preachers and good pastors, but terrible fathers. It's just like Jonathan Edwards, I think, it, no, not Jonathan Edwards, was it Whitfield maybe? I think it was Whitfield. He was a wonderful preacher, but a horrible husband. He had no business being married. He had left his wife so much to preach everywhere, and... It was a bad situation. Um, But anyway, uh, but the point is for a pastor, for a bishop, and, and by the way, our families get attacked more than anybody's. 
pray for pastor's children. Pray for them. Because they get attacked by the devil. They're a target. They get attacked by Satan. They get attacked by church members. They get targeted. But you and I are to be faithful. We're to be faithful. We're to be found faithful. And we're to teach our children to be faithful. We're to raise them in faithfulness. Now, the best way to do that is what you speak and what you do matches all to the glory of God. Faithfulness. Because that's what God wants. You know, Jesus is our example for faithfulness. Hebrews 2.17, Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. That's what God did for us. Faithful. Jesus was faithful. Who was faithful to him that appointed him? Right? Faithful. I like this. I like the fact that People ask, well, what's God's name? Well, one of them is faithful. Look at this. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. That's Jesus. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's Jesus Christ. That's who he is. King of kings and Lord of lords. Faithful, faithful, faithful. Amen? That's Jesus. That's who he is. He's faithful. That's our perfect example. That's Jesus' name, faithful. Right? Stick that in your Hebrew rooter, tutor, pipe, and smoke it. Right? Well, don't smoke it, but you know what I mean. I don't, want to say, I don't want to be sacrilegious. Forgive me, Lord. I don't want to sound that way. But, um, but the point is, that's, that's uh, those sacred namers. Well, that's a, that's a name right there, faithful and true. Right? Faithful and true. That's who Jesus is. He's faithful and he is true.
Amen. All right, everybody. God bless you. I hope it was a blessing to you, and uh, appreciate the prayers, and I look forward to being back with you, I think it will probably be Friday. That's my guess. Uh, probably Friday, and I will probably do one broadcast next week uh, because next weekend, obviously, is Thanksgiving, but next Thursday. But uh, Friday, I will be hunting black powder season again, or now for this season. So that's probably what I'll be doing. Uh, but uh, I should be back. But I should be back here Friday. I'm guessing that's the day I'll be back. Uh, Yep, probably be 2 o'clock on Friday, but it could be sooner. I don't know. Sometimes Friday's a little bit uh, earlier, but we'll see. It could be Thursday, Thursday or Friday. I'm just not sure yet. So I'll let you know this week, but, um, you know, we'll definitely let you know. But I hope it's uh, – thank you, Anna. I appreciate that. Uh, and then congratulations to Teresa. She just shot a, uh, a, a buck, so a yearling buck here uh, while she was listening to the broadcaster, <laughs> I don't know if that's how she was doing it, but anyway, but she, uh, I think it confused the deer and, uh, she shot it. I'm just kidding. But, uh, but, uh, anyway, uh, praise the Lord for, for that. And, uh, that's a blessing. So we're going to try to get another one and I want I'm going to, sh- I want to do it on my property again. I want to try to get one on my property again for black powder. So. And then I'm going to build a night, Lord willing, I'm going to build a nice warm stand uh, that I can sit in and be warm and see my whole property and all that good stuff. So for next year, not this year, but for next year, Lord willing. So I'm kind of excited about that. That's going to be fun. Anyway, and we're, we're still working on getting my office all taken care of and getting things started there and building a studio there, and all that fun stuff. So we will see how that goes as time goes. But uh, uh, anyway, you pray for us. Uh, If you want to listen to the latest sermons on COVID and uh, all that good stuff, uh, go to sermonaudio.com slash Pastor Cooley. Go there, and you can listen to those. If you want to listen live to our sermon tomorrow night... I am going to be bringing the second part to this message uh, called The Mentality of the Mark of the Beast. Force vaccinations, the mentality of the Mark of the Beast. That will be tomorrow night, 7.30 Central Time on sermonaudio.com slash Pastor Cooley. The Mentality of the Mark of the Beast. Okay? So uh, that's tomorrow night. 7.30 7.30 p.m. Central Time, all right? Um, and um, so you can uh, catch us then, all right? If you'd like to pray for us, please do. We could use all the prayers that we can get. Uh, we appreciate and covet your prayers. If you'd like to give to our ministry, if you'd like to give to our ministry, you can go to our sermonaudio.com slash Pastor Cooley play- page uh, kick, uh, click on PayPal or kick, kick, click on give, click the PayPal button, and then you can give, or you can just go to PayPal and send us uh, money through Salvation Preacher to salvationpreacher at gmail.com or Pastor Cooley at iCloud.com. Those are all PayPal. Uh, that's our PayPal addresses. Also, uh, Apple Pay. And someone else just sent me money through Cash App, and I have not used, I don't even know how I'm going to access that money. I have no idea, but somebody sent me some through that. So I'll figure that out somehow, some way. But anyway, so those are, or you can mail us a check, all right? You can mail that. That's at the bottom of the screen. If you choose to, right there, that's our address. That's where you can find us. And thank you to all who have prayed for us, and thank you to all who have given to our ministry and to the work of the Lord here. Uh, Praise the Lord for that. We'll be back out uh, in a few weeks uh, evangelizing uh, and uh, getting out there and preaching and teaching the gospel in the streets. 
uh, at different events that come up. we got a lot going on, though, within the next couple of weeks. People moving, buying houses, all kinds of fun stuff. So uh, different things going on. But uh, Lord willing, uh, we'll be back uh, to the normal schedule with that. All right, God bless you all. Take care, and we'll talk.